So my name is Joaf Schwam. Uh, as Barbara said, I'll speak about a complementary activity that we're just getting started now called the AI Index. Um, and as also Barbara said, the idea is whereas we have the idea in the AI 100 of a sort of a syncopated uh, rhythm of uh, reports spaced uh, several years apart, uh, it would be nice to have a more uh, a, 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 an activity that A would be more ongoing and be sort of uniform, whereas the, the uh, uh, studies would presumably be, see, be somewhat different from one another, so just to give you a more continuous sense of the field uh, throughout time. So we call it the AI index. What is the AI index? Um, well, um, it'll be a set of measures that captures the state of AI and uh, at a given point in time and then over time. Uh, the idea is to be sort of very responsible and sober about very fact-based, not be neither, be neither an apologist for AI nor a, uh, an alarmist, but something responsible in the middle. And the audience are the same audience that we have for the AI, AI 100 uh, in the first place. Uh, as I think Barbara mentioned, certainly for AI research to help them see the forest for the trees. Uh, for industry to understand where best to invest resources, how, many to invest, how much resource to invest. Um, for policy, government, policy uh, makers and funding bodies in general to have a, a, a similar sense for uh, how best to uh, leverage uh, scarce resources. And uh, finally, uh, for the general public uh, and the media as a conduit, uh, we see today a lot of conversations about AI. It's funny, you know, in uh, 1985, I remember, um, a lot of interest in AI. Then we went to AI winter, now clearly another boom date for AI. And the conversation is often uh, either comical or, or um, dismaying or, or, or both. And so we hope that a fact-based responsible index can inform that conversation and make it more socially useful. A word about indices. Uh, often when we think about indices, we think about a financial index such as the uh, S&P 500 or uh, an economic index such as the GDP. Uh, and certainly those are indices, but indices vary widely. Here are just a, a few uh, from various walks of life. And the, the main thing to take away is not only that indices are used in many things, not only for finance and economics, but they not always are a number. Uh, sometimes there are a set of numbers, they can be quantitative, but not a single number. And often they're not quantitative, they can be qualitative, they can be an image, they can be a set of words. Uh, sometimes those are objective, sometimes they contain a subjective a component. Um, and so the design space of indices is very broad, so we should be somewhat um, humble when we go to design an index. An index, by definition, loses information. So there's always a danger that you'll tell a story that's very uh, precise, but not accurate, if you know what I'm saying. Um, it can be um, uh, seductive to tell a very easy to understand story that is wrong. And so the goal is to lose enough information to make the story understandable, but still tell the truth. So that's the design space. So what will, uh, uh, what, what do indices do despite this uh, big diversity? Well, this, they have these things in common. First of all, they frame the conversation of a domain. It's very hard to speak about the economy of a country. And here's one number GDP, and GDP has attracted a lot of uh, controversy and criticism. Clearly, it loses valuable information, and yet, it captures enough, and it sort of is a way to speak about the economy alongside other indices. Uh, once you frame the conversation, now you can have a snapshot of the domain in that, within that framework, and track trends over time. Um, so that's what an index does, and when you do it, and if you do it right, it A, helps the practitioners have, again, see the forest for the trees, uh, helps guide policy, and uh, like I said, hey, help shape policy, uh, public discourse. So, 
With that as a general backdrop, uh, what, will, what is the AI index? Let me first say we don't know. We've just started and I've already told you that it's a hard intellectual exercise. But um, it certainly will capture competencies. These are just examples of competency, competencies. Some of them are very easily, easy to understand, like the ELO scores of uh, chess players. Um, uh, some of them are more geeky, uh, like uh, how good are we doing on a class of problems called satisfiability that underlie a lot of optimization that goes on in AI. Uh, but those are well understood and quantifiable. There'll be others like them. But we expect there'll be much more in the index. We expect that we'll get a sense for how much education and professional training is taking on the planet, how many undergrads and graduates, how many MOOCs are taken in the space, what have you. We uh, would like to see the research activity, the volume, the fo foci, foci, foci within. You know, 20 years ago it was all about logic. Now nobody cares anymore. It could be a mistake, but they don't. Uh, and. Um, and, uh, and uh, so to, to track those things. Uh, we certainly want to see uh, industries interest in, investment in, and adoption of uh, AI technology. Uh, we'd like to see the government angle, both the funding level, the policy involvement, uh, social impact. Um, recently, there's a lot of discussion about potential negatives. Again, fairly alarmist and unfounded in my view. But certainly, we should watch out for those, as long as there's uh, lots of social good that is done by AI, and uh, finally, public attitudes and other things like it. So we think it'd be, it should be a quite a broad set of measures. Uh, and like I said, we just got, it start, got started, so um, we'll see where it actually leads. Uh, this is the final slide. Uh, this was the final slide. Um, uh, somebody help me, please. Thank you. Um, that's the first slide. <laughs> uh, not my. So, like I was saying, um, I'm not touching anything, it's happening. Why did I even bother? Um, so, here we are. So, and this is the final slide. So uh, we've just started. Uh, uh, we view this as a two-phased uh, exercise. The startup phase, uh, which will take some number of months, um, not a very small number of months, uh, uh, will, uh, has really a goal of defining the index, which is a, like a, a very interesting intellectual exercise. And, uh, and while we're doing that, figuring out the final home for this on an ongoing basis, the uh, organizational home, organizational plan, the structure, the funding model, all of that. And then there will be the ongoing operation within that permanent home. Who's involved here? Well, first of all, it is overseen by the standing committee of the uh, AI100 uh, project, as it's affectionately known by the AI100 people. Um, it's, there's a working group that uh, will be led by three people. In addition to myself, there's Ray Perot sitting right there, who uh, at, beside that is also head of the AI Center at SRI, and Eric Brynjolfsson, an economist from MIT. And um, we don't think that even this group, which will have about 15 people, has a unique uh, insight and uh, we r will be seeking the advice of a larger advisory group. And at this point, I'd like to invite all of you to volunteer to play a role here. Uh, if you have requests for the data to be included, if you even more usefully have ideas of where that data can be obtained, and once we put together an initial uh, design for the index, if you'd like to chime in, that'd be wonderful. Please sign up. Uh, we really welcome that. Um, and that's where you sign up. And I'm done.